This is probably the worst idea I've had so far. Hey everyone, my name is Envy and I'm sitting in front of bookshelves that haven't been touched since 2017 when I put these ones up in this space. This is actually a space divider, by the way, which would have been awesome if I had space to divide, which I don't. So as a result, I now have double rows of books. I have books on top of books because I just kept buying them when I was in high school. And as a result, it's complete chaos. And I should have just sorted this out ages ago when I had time. But now it's starting to get out of hand and something needs to be done about this. So I thought, New Year, old me, I gotta clean this stuff up. So what we're gonna do today is I'm going to do all the work because that's how a YouTube video works. And you're gonna watch me suffer. So the plan is to, first of all, get this stuff out. These are all DVDs I bought in the last decade, I think. And that's awesome because at least I have some of my favorite movies on DVD in case I don't have an internet connection. Um, but I also can't watch them because I don't even have a DVD player. I can't watch them on my laptop. So these are just here gathering, my, uh, gathering dust. I'm gonna bring them over to my parents who do have a DVD player so at least I can watch my movies there. Um, then I'm also gonna get out all the souvenirs like the wine bottle. I don't even remember how I got it. I don't know what it's doing here and I'm gonna decide what's going to happen to all of those. And I'm actually going to try and unhaul some books which is most probably gonna break my heart but it needs to be done because a lot of these books were bought when I was... 14, 15, 16 years old and back then it meant a lot to me when I bought a book because books are not cheap here. So I'd save up all my money for a month, maybe two months, three, and then I'd buy two books. I'd be so proud of myself for having bought a book with my own money. And that's why it's always a bit difficult to get rid of some, but at the same time, overflowing shelves. I can't hold on to everything anymore because this is just ridiculous and something's gotta go. Also, I didn't like every book I ever bought, so we're gonna sort through it, I hope. I hope you enjoyed this chaos that's about to ensue. This is not okay. <laughs> I need to sort through this and decide what I want to keep and what I want to rehome because there is no chance that I want to keep all of this. Honestly, I've had better ideas in my lifetime than doing this, but it really needed to be done. I mean, this is insane and I didn't even realize how bad it had gotten like the last few years of high school and I've been out of high school for six years so <laughs> this is a wake-up call also I don't know if you can hear it but someone decided that 10 a.m. on a Tuesday was the perfect moment to start hammering away at something I don't know anyway I've made the first selection and this one was actually pretty easy because I don't actually have to get rid of these First one that's not going to return to my shelf is this Scandinavian thriller. I don't know how to pronounce the author's last name. I only remember that this book takes place in Sydney and my dad got it for Christmas as a present for me even though he likes the author more than I do. So it was one of those double presents, you know. Um, 
I like this book mainly because it took place in Australia. Um, I'm not really into thrillers, so I'm giving this one to my parents because they have the entire genre, not genre. <laughs> Honestly, this whole ordeal is making my brain melt. Anyway, they have more books by this author, so I think it will be fine to put it on their shelves. And the next two are also going to my parents' shelves because they are books by Stephen King. This is my favorite ever, at least it was when I was in high school. I don't know if it still holds up because I've become a lot more critical of Stephen King. And then I also have... Under the Dome, I'm still mad about the TV series, the second season, I didn't like it at all. Anyway, um, this one's about sort of zombie apocalypse caused by cell phones. I like that one much better, but my parents and I um, kinda messed up when it came to books by Stephen King because we kept them in five different places and we're now trying to centralize the collection. So these are going to the centralized collection which is on their shelves. So that is quite a lot of shelf space that I'm saving up. Okay, and the next pile took a lot more effort. Um, these are books I'm going to reread and then probably rehome, donate, give away to friends, I don't really care, but these books, I've outgrown them, or I don't remember them, or I decide not to finish the series, or I'm gonna finish it but check them out of the library, so I don't see much of a reason to keep them. A few of them are also on my TBR pile for 2021, so gone. You've probably already seen that if you watch my TBR. If you haven't, you should do that. You know, that's how YouTube works. I'm gonna force you to look at the other video. Also, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, also from TBR. Bitter Blue, again, on the TBR. And then I found this book by Joanne Harris. I think there are multiple Joanne Harrises in the book world. Um, the Dutch name is Runevuur. It's originally called Room Light, I now see. Um, I was about a hundred pages into this book when I realized it was a sequel. And the people at the bookstore hadn't told me, even though they always told me everything about every book they had in that store. So yeah, I was a bit pissed. It's about Norse mythology, but it's not as engaging as the Magnus Chase series. So I'm probably just going to reread this, asking if my dad wants to keep it, and if not, I'm probably gonna get rid of it after I read it again because I also don't remember the plot. And then there's this book. It's a Dutch book about a guy who decides to make this life-changing decision to become a teacher at age 35. The reason why I have this book is because I was trying to become a teacher once and it sucked. I was miserable. And my mom wanted to cheer me up, so she bought me this book to show me that there were other people having a hard time with teaching as well. And that plan didn't really work, that plan of hers. Although the book is really well written, in my opinion at least, from what I remember. And it has fun anecdotes and it shows what's wrong with the Dutch education system and the way teachers are taught to teach. But every time I look at this book, I feel miserable again just because it just brings back all these memories of practically getting kicked out of my degree course for being the way I am. And the way I am means I asked questions that were a bit too critical. So yeah, that's how I ended up in that scenario. And this book is a physical reminder of that. I don't want to keep it for that reason. And I also found an Embracer's book. Let me check real quick what the original title was. Uh, oh, last summer, so it was literally translated. I also don't remember much about this book, except for the fact that I loved it because it was about people who only saw each other over the summer, and that reminded me of my childhood summers in California, when I also had two friends I only saw over the summers. Um, but. At the same time, I think that if I would read this book now, I wouldn't care so much about it anymore. So this is one that I'm going to read and then decide on what I'm going to do with it. Um, I hope I'm not hurting anyone's feelings when I say I'm gonna get rid of a Lee Bardugo book. 
That's because I only have this one installment of the series. This one was originally, I should have checked this before I started filming, Shadow and Bone. I've read this, I've enjoyed it, but um, I'm a snob. I don't want one uh, installment of the series to be ugly because it came from the thrift store and then the rest to be all nice. So that's why I never bought the other um, books in the series. And also, I could just get them from the library once I get a library card. So I don't see a reason to hold on to this book that's almost falling apart. Um, if I can also just, well, put it in one of those mini libraries where people come and pick up books they want to read and then give to someone else. So this is one of those books that I'm going to reread and then put in one of those mini libraries on my block and hope someone else finds it and likes it. Final two. Final two of this set. I have no idea what I was thinking when I bought these two and I also don't remember the plot. They're by James Rollins and they're this weird YA stuff about people disappearing and 2012 the end of the world and there was a parallel dimension where remnants of old civilizations were kept but like not ruins but actual people from that era were surviving so there was a viking dude living next door to an Aztec girl or something like that and I really don't know why I bought the sequel I I my judgment was off when I was 16 I think. So for what's left which is actually still way too much I'm gonna sort this by language, by genre, and what else was I going to do? Well, that's about all the system I have for this kind of stuff. I then just put it in the shelves, whatever feels nice. I already know that I'm going to move Harry Potter to the bottom shelf because I have Dutch copies and those suck. They translated all the names and I hate that. And also, I'm not really proud of owning them anymore, but also I don't want to get rid of them yet. Because I feel like this discussion hasn't ended yet, and um, half of them are actually my mom's, so I have no right to just throw them out. So those are going to be moved to the bottom shelf where I can't see them anymore. And, oh, I'm intimidated by my own book collection. This is not okay. Wish me luck. finally made it through all my Dutch books, except for the one pile over there because Rick Riordan has become his own genre and I can't split those up. Neil Gaiman also his own genre. Then everything I have from the dystopian boom, Harry Potter, a series that I can't get rid of because I loved it so much when I was a kid. Then two more piles that go way back to when I was 12. Can't get rid of those either. Then I have Shadow Hunters. I only have the first three and that was enough for me. Also a pile of books. That pile uh, that was just random and I couldn't really shove it into a different genre. So now I have my English and my German books left and I'm tired. Oh wait, wait, wait. I also have my high fancy uh, random book here that I haven't sorted yet and Alice in Wonderland and then that is a multilingual pile. <laughs> Please wish me luck, I'm dying over here. Foreign language has been sorted so I've got the high fancy pile still there along with Alice in Wonderland because I just don't know where else to keep them. Then over here I have my German pile. And back here is where I keep four piles of English books. Um, ow, I'm sitting on books. So here are the English books. This pile is mostly just standalones or books that I didn't like enough for a sequel to be bought. And then there are my Rainbow Rowell books, which are going to be on the same shelf for the first time in forever. And a few more series. I also didn't finish the Rosie Project series because I got a bit bored halfway through the second book. But I'm keeping them anyway because I enjoyed them. 
And now I can finally put all these books back where they belong on my empty and clean shelves. was done completely done and then I realized that I forgot <laughs> this whole pile and these are not actual books well they are of course but this is about Namibian history a German book about Namibian history I found it in Namibia and I love it but yeah I didn't have a real space for it to begin with also, a travel guide to Cape Town, a travel guide to Jordan, a travel guide to <laughs> Thailand. I keep these from every country I visit. I have one, well, at least like countries I've visited in the past four years. And I love them. These are great keepsakes, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't, they don't fit in with the rest of the shelves. So I guess I'm gonna go find new space for them and leave this as it is. Maybe switch a few books around here and there. I'm not 100% happy yet, but that's probably something I'm gonna do tomorrow. For now, I'm just gonna put my other souvenirs, whatever I have left, back on the shelves. Also, this is still empty. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. I put some letter bounds here, the big Barnes & Noble ones, but then it felt quite claustrophobic and full. So maybe I'll just make this like a display thingy. I already put this one here. This is actually pretty cool. I'm gonna show it. Like, it's 13 reasons why and the book itself isn't even that great, but look. You open it and it reads like that. And I had to have it just because of the cover. Because this is awesome. A plus for design. I love it. So that one is standing over there right now. Because I don't have anything else like it. Um, what else? I'm going to put other stuff back. I have a peanut butter jar. I don't even remember why I've kept this all these years. I, I use this as a happy jar project. Like it's full of scraps of paper with happy memories on them. But most of these I made with people who later stabbed me in the back. And I really don't understand why I ever kept this in the first place. So I'm going to recycle both the paper and the peanut butter jar because this is not going back on my shelves. I want to make a disclaimer about these three items. I did not pick these up on a beach somewhere in a foreign country. Neither the coral pieces nor the shell. These are actually from my dad's uncle who died a couple of years ago. And he took these with him from, I think, Indonesia. So he was the one being illegal. And, um, well, oops. <laughs> the thing is, when he passed away, everyone wanted to throw this out. And I felt like that would be a waste because, well, it's already been picked up. It's already been smuggled halfway across the world. We might as well hold on to it. I mean... It is beautiful. I would never pick it up myself, but it would have been a waste to just throw this away. So now I keep them and they deserve a special place in my bookshelves, in my bookcase. So I'm not illegal. Maybe I am. What are the laws surrounding inheriting illegal wildlife kind of stuff? Oh damn, I never thought this through. Anyway, I was not the one who picked this up. My dad's uncle brought them from probably Indonesia. Please don't sue me. I 
am finally done so I can give you a short tour. This one is mostly childhood favorites. Then I put all my Rick Riordan books in one place. I never knew this was even possible with my shelves, but it fit and I'm super happy. But now I can't buy the fourth installment in Trials of Apollo series because then I'll have to stack books again. So I didn't think that through, but it works for now and I'm very happy with it. And then we've got mostly English language books here. They're in front of some Dutch stuff. Oh no, focus. So these are in front of some Dutch books that I'm not planning on reading anytime soon. So that was a good solution. Now one down, we've got some stuff I bought in high school. Shadowhunters, um, I think it's called in... English, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and some adult fantasy above my... <laughs> oh god. This was all from the dystopian fiction boom in YA from about a decade ago, and I fell for it. It was really bad. And then this is the only part that I'm not too happy with. This was just where I put all the books that I couldn't fit anywhere else. Then here we've got Harry Potter, hidden by Game of Thrones, and I've got Hodor, which was a gift of a friend of mine, and he can finally be next to his books. Final one is here my German book collection, which is also used to hide some books that I... Please focus. So these are also used to hide some books that I don't really know if I want to have them in front of my face every morning when I wake up. My bookshelf is actually the first thing I see in the morning when I wake up. And then here in the middle we've got two old cameras, the book that looks like a tape, and two black and white pictures from my time in Africa. I wanted to put books up here, but it just became too much, so I decided to leave this empty and put my granddad's old cameras here. I am honestly so tired. I can't remember the last time I was this tired. It took me all morning to grab all my books, to sort them, to go through them. What do I want to keep? What do I want to rehome? And put it back up on these shelves. I'm so happy that this is done and over with. Even though I'm not 100% happy with everything I did, I am just so glad that it doesn't look like a complete mess anymore. I've decided what to do with some books that I haven't liked in a very long time. So my whole room feels different now and I'm very happy with that. I also cleaned out some other stuff while I was at it. And basically, I have a lot more space now. I'm happy. I hope you're happy. I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer through all this. And yeah, maybe watch another video, subscribe, do all the stuff YouTubers always ask you. I'm just gonna go away and take a nap because God knows I need one. <laughs>